Hello and welcome to the international leadership series of VLaunch from the UAE. We have someone with us who's a skilled professional with 18 plus years of luxury and mid-market beauty and apparel, retail and distribution experience from the Middle East and the Indian subcontinent. He has worked with companies like Bugatti, Saks, Fifth Avenue, Jashan Mal. Currently, he's working with Gulf Marketing Company as their retail director contracted brands division for the GCC region. So when you joined 18 years ago, the retail sector, was the sector formalized or was it still in a uh, stage of I, very informal? If, uh, today, Dubai is known as a, a big mall, a big airport and a big hotel, sure. which was not the case uh, when I came in. Yeah. I came in the end of 1999. Okay. And uh, two prominent malls were there in Dubai. One was the one we are sitting in right now, yeah. Mall, yeah. and one was Dera City Center. Right. So, uh, mauling had s was still very nascent mm -hmm. and most of the brands mm -hmm. were not present. Yeah. Uh, they started bringing in a lot of the Eurocentric brands because of the proximity of the Middle East to Europe mm -hmm. and uh, Britain. And towards the mid-2000s is when they started exploring American brands because that was the opportunity. Once you've covered this platform, where do you go next? Mm -hmm. And that's when the uh, retailers like uh, in uh, Saks Fifth Avenue came in, Bloomingdale's came in, Crate and Barrel came in, Pottery Barn. So all these American retailers started, you know, mushrooming. And I think today, Dubai is very well presented in terms of luxury. It probably has 90% penetration of the brands across the world. Mm -hmm. And it has become a premier destination. It's, mm -hmm. I would call it the mecca of shopping of the Middle East. So I've seen this, this journey evolve. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I also write articles on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe some of the students can, you know, look me up on LinkedIn. And I've written an article on the evolution of the retail industry in Dubai mm -hmm. and how it has grown over the years. So if, if you could just give us a crux of the article that uh, you've written, just a very brief. Uh, so uh, b basically, uh, retail in the UAE is com uh, is predominant in Dubai and uh, uh, Abu Dhabi, mm -hmm. and uh, I think. Dubai became the retail hub with the introduction of the Dubai Shopping Festival. Right. Yeah, and that's when people said, okay, mm -hmm. they're doing something special, it's discounted. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of tourism that happened uh, at the early days of it. Right. I think Emirates as an airline also took off and started doing a lot of branding. Mm -hmm. And then people in India, mm -hmm. uh, I think the sleeping giant was the middle, middle income class sure. that became more aspirational. Mm -hmm. And while we know that brands are always positioned much higher in India than they are here in the Middle East, people would say, I'd rather mm -hmm. take a ticket. Mm -hmm. It'll cover the increase of the cost that I would have to pay in India, come across to Dubai. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's the way Dubai grew as a market. And, uh, you know, I think the ruler just took it to the next level. He wanted to actually create Singapore. That was his vision of Dubai, to make it a Singapore of the Middle East. And if you look around you today, some of the buildings also are pretty much to what is there in Singapore. It's, you, you, it's an amazing journey. Right. So it, it kind of, did it coincide with the uh, UAE also becoming like a tourist hub? I, I think there were a lot of factors mm -hmm. in place. The first, of course, was Emirates Airlines. Mm -hmm. The second would be the Dubai Shopping Festival. Mm -hmm. And the third would be the influx of, of people, you know, and the relaxation of visas. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were the first uh, Emirate, I would think, to open up mm -hmm. to the outside world. Sure. They were more liberalized, right. as a result of which uh, people were more uh, comfortable coming here. Mm -hmm. You could feel a distinction between the cultures. Right? And if you look at it, Dubai's model has all been about integration. Right. And, you know, they've got maybe over 100 nationalities living here under one roof. But in all fairness, uh, I think. Uh, Dubai has, has been a model for success that, that where, you know, a lot of the fabric of society has been made up by expats and who have integrated very well. I think that most of the people who came here in the, in the 80s really made it big. Mm -hmm. They are the big businessmen today, sure. like the Lal's group, yeah. you know, uh, Mr. Lal Ganwani. You've got uh, Mr. Pagarani who, who had uh, Almaya, yeah. you know. So there are lots of Indian success stories, a lot of very... Uh, big reputed Indian companies have made a name for themselves. Uh, one of it is the Lulu Group. Lulu. So 
I think Indians have got a brilliant success story. They have got a big hand in building this country. And I don't think that, uh, I think that, you know, the, the, ruling, the ruling family definitely, uh, you know, gives us that, uh, that kind of respect and credibility. Yes, because I, I, I think that there's no, there's no building in this, in this uh, country where a brick has not been laid by an Indian. You know, which actually I'm getting goosebumps saying that, but that is a fact and it's a proud thing, you know, for us. Absolutely. Yeah.